When we first introduced DSC, that was um, a system coming also from suppliers. Then we are working on some ideas of our own to improve performance of the cars. And we know if we can do that for ourselves, not by the supplier, we are able to create more performance. And the ideas and the functions we designed, we get into a black box by the supplier. And in these days, we are able to do functions in the car which are not available for other um, competitors with the same supplier. So when we talking about the new generation of the M2, but also with the M3 and M4, we thought we have the possibility to use a similar powertrain concept also for the smaller, with the, with the bigger cars, but also with the chassis. So from the beginning on, we decided to do that with the same technique um, in powertrain in the chassis. So was it a combination of money, meaning development costs are lower, or also trying to get more performance out of the M2? Um, it's more the, the focus on the performance in the M2, because the cost for the engine is not a very deep one, it's a more higher one, it's a very complex but also very innovative um, engine and that costs money. And how do you arrive at the different output levels? Like you start at 479, go to 503, all the way up to 540 in the CSL. When we designed this engine for the first time in the beginning, we know that we want to have a long time possibility with this engine also for modern power steps, but also for the next steps of regulation we will have, especially in the Europe. And you've introduced something with the M4 originally, and then it's on this car as well. I can't even pronounce it properly. It's effectively having the stability control system, yes. the trash control system, and the ECU communicate in a yes. way that hasn't been yes. communicated before. What is that? I think to explain, we have to start with the generation before. So in the generation before, you have a control unit for the engine. that calibrate everything, throttle control and something like that. The DC was complete off. The DC calculated the slip, the stability of the car. And in the case of interaction using for understeering or oversteering, there was a command DSC to the ECU of the power engine, um, reduce please the torque. The new generation for the first time, we do the slip control calculation in the control unit of the engine. So then we can shorten the time between, in the communication between the two ECUs by about 200 milliseconds. And with this, we are much more precise, but much more faster than in the past. So we can react much earlier on a slip um, situation than in the past. And that is also a very big step in the performance of the car. You make it sound simple, but why wouldn't, say, you or other performance OEMs think to do that a long time ago? Um, when we first introduced DSC, that was um, a system coming also from suppliers. Then we are working on some um, common or own ideas of our own to improve performance of the cars. And we know if we can do that for ourselves, not um, by the supplier, we are able to use more performance, to create more performance. And the ideas and the functions we defined or we designed, we get into a black box by the supplier and in these days we are able to do functions in the car which are not available for other um, competitors with the same supplier. So that's, um, I think it's unique and that is our, our invest also in the future and the performance of our uh, future. Are you effectively sending the suppliers an API so they know how to interact with your yes, systems? Yes, yes. Oh, so you're, you're, you're like a developer. We, we are de developing that and we um, have an, an, a model, a business model, how we arrange it with the suppliers to, to get the performance, at least in the car, without um, talking too much about our secrets. And were they receptive to this relationship? Yes. Yeah. They but do. not to the point where you feel it would take it somewhere else? No. Yes, that's right. Okay, Dirk, let's switch gears and let's go to something much bigger, which is the XM. And if you think about anybody, like I, I used to own an M car, and it was, it, was a, it was a Z3M. Okay. Not in my wildest dreams when I bought that car would I think M would make something like this. Okay. And the, the obvious reason why people would think that is the thing weighs 6,000 pounds, but yet it goes around corners and doesn't, you don't feel unsafe, you don't feel out of control. Mm -hmm. How do you make that happen with that much weight? 
I, I think um, when you start a project like that, and it's the first time we do a car in this dimension, it's also much bigger than the X5 and the X6M. So oh, for the avoidance of doubt, it's about a thousand pounds heavier. That's right. So we have an idea and our philosophy. So when we design a new car, also in this dimension, we want, we want to get this M-typical feeling, precision and handling. And we begin in the concept phase with the car to take a look on what the right mechanical concept for that is. We don't want to emphasize one or two systems. We want to get the overall performance with an idea for handling and precision and comfort um, especially for the XM. Also in combination with the first time electrified drive in an MHP car. It started with the idea, it started with a philosophy and then not to lose this direction out of the eyes, more to concrete it step by step and to take a look on what's possible with that. So we have for example to increase the performance on the front axle to get this very nice and precise road holding and stability of the car. And we add step by step and see there is a way also to get this M-typical feeling in a car like that with a hybrid powertrain. For example, what would you do to the front end to make that work in that car? We used an um, active road stabilization system which more power. So in comparison to the elder generation of the X5 and the X6M, we used for the first time a 48 volt system. So you have the possibility also to control the body of the car with a higher weight, for example. Then we take a special um, setup on the tire dimension and on the tire specifications. Mm. We use a lot of parts coming from the X5M, but also step by step to increase it a little bit to get a performance um, uh, matching to the car. So you bring up the X5M, which I think is an unusually good example. It too can go around corners, but not quite as sharp as that, even though it weighs less. And I always attributed that to it not having the 48 volt active roll stabilization. Like Cayennes and Mercedes have had it for a while where it's the split uh, anti-roll bar and you're just putting it here now. Was there a, was there a specific reason you didn't put it in the X5, X6? So we have previously? it in the X5M so but it's, with it's, 12, 12 volts and yes. we changed it now to the new model also to 48 volts. So we have changed that. I think, um, but for example, in the XM we also use for the first time the integral active steering because we have a very long wheelbase and we thought for the first time it would be a good idea to use also the possibility of steering the rear wheels to get smaller turning cycle. The turning cycle of the car is smaller than in the X5M mm. and on the other side also to get more agility and handling. We don't want that the customer, the driver feel system by system. We want to get this overall performance impression in the car. So Dirk, I want to switch gears on you again. Uh, in the XM, yes, you have an electric motor, but it brought an interesting change. You guys have been very successful in the M5, in this car, yep. other M cars, where you have an eight-speed transmission, but unlike other performance cars, it has a torque converter. Yep. It's not like a dual clutch. Yep. But this one, with the electric motor in the transmission, you've changed to a wet multi-plate clutch. Yes. Why was that? So we use uh, the, um, the offer of ZF. Um, we are very experienced in the HAP and we thought this new gearbox um, we can also handle for the function of the car very well with the experience we have also in the past with the torque converter. And we think overall it's a very good um, technique in this gearbox to get this overall performance not only for electric drive, but also for boosting and um, a very smooth controlling of gear changing. So we're coming more from the perspective of the function of the powertrain and we use a new technology which en 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 enables us sorry, for the PHAV um, version of the XM. And are we going to see this in more applications of coming BMWs and M cars? As I have said, it's also the premiere of the M hybrid powertrain. Okay. Um, perhaps we will see it also in other cars. So M760E, perhaps some other stuff. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> you keep it close to the vest. Yeah. Um, but, for, I, I, but, but one additional um, comment I think I want to say. We also go with a um, torque converter in very sportive cars. For example, in the brand new M4 GT4. And it works much faster than a double clutch in these days. And we think we are on a good way. It's a little bit heavier than a double clutch system, but function-wise, 
it's in these days minimum the same um, feature and performance um, as we have in the, in the past with the double clutch systems. So I, I've got to pick up on that because I, I've been driving your cars for years and people who watch my episodes know that I am blown away by like driving an M5 CS. You would never think a torque converter can do that. Yes. But then that same exact transmission, the same one, is in a Jaguar. And you'd be like, this is a piece of crap, this transmission. So what are you doing to the tuning to make it that big of a difference when the hardware is the same? You, you must come from the idea and the vision what you want to have in the car. And where do you also stop with the refinement? So my team will never stop with refinement. I have to say stop now because we yeah. have also to go into production. But they have every day a new idea how to improve the performance. And I think you have to take a look in detail on the possibilities of the technique and then to have the idea how to fulfill this vision of a performance in the car. And so, that is, uh, I think, that the secret and the difference also to other competitors. So at the end of the day, it's just more iterations yes. that get to that point. Yes. Uh, one final point on the XM, I don't know if this falls under your purview, but the back seat, it's a big deal in this thing. And from what I'm seeing, it's you picked it up and you moved it farther back in the car. Was that difficult in, in packaging or was it just simply the, the cushion picks up and moves? In, in this day, anything is um, simple, but I think it's the same. We want to have um, the possibility to have a driver-oriented first line yeah. in the car, first row, and a very unique new one in, in, in the rear. Um, it, it is an effort, but it's not, um, it, it could work, I think you can see in the car. Sir, you've never been on the show before. But what we like to do when we end these episodes is turn it around to the audience okay. to get their feedback. Okay. And so I'm going to ask you, what kind of feedback do you want from the audience about either this or the XM or a future M product? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure. I think I, I would be interested um, to get a feedback because it's the two bookends of our portfolio. What do you think when we launched these two bookends of our portfolio at the same time, what's your impression, what's your feedback for that? I okay. think this is more the expected, and the other one, perhaps, it's more surprising. I'm not sure. Okay, that, that's, a very, that's a tough question, but a good question. You heard the man, let us know in the comments below, or via our social media, Motoman TV onward, Motoman TV onward. And I do want to point out, while you're answering this man's question, just tell the audience, you, you head R&D, what does that mean at BMW M? So I'm responsible with my team, it's about 500 people for all the M high performance models and also for some um, points for BMW individual and so on um, from the beginning to the end and we are very happy to do it in a very small team if you compare to a bigger company and we are responsible for the performance and the success of the cars. So in other words, he's the Koenig of <laughs> M GmbH. Thank you very much for joining You're me. You're welcome. Until Thank we you see you in the next episode, bis später.